Praise the Lord, everybody. How many is ready to have church today? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. We're going to get started here in a minute. Before we get started, I do want to just go over a couple of things. And uh, don't forget, MIT is on February the 13th at 4 o'clock. need all the ministers in training there that day. And don't forget, your uh, king and queen money is due today if your child is entering into that. Just so you know, one dollar will give your child a hundred votes. So we had to get them involved in it. So make sure you uh, give in to that today for your child. We want them to be a part of it. February the 12th is Joy Group Meeting. Uh, February the 12th is also Young Marriage Party, uh, Valentine's Party. If you are bringing you and your spouse to time that they're doing steak and chicken and all the good stuff, make sure you pay that today because that way they're going to know what food to buy. You need to turn it in today. Young Marriage, say today is the day that we're going to have chicken and steak on February the 12th. So make sure you get t- tuned into that, tagged into that. And uh, so let's get all these dates together. Am I forgetting any other announcements before we forget? And by the way, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm 50 years old, and I'm still in a young marriage group. Praise the Lord. So I will be there, and I'm looking for all you young marriage to be there as well. $40 for a meal, Brother Hunt, that's kind of steep. Well, is your bride worth $40? I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Praise God. All right, so make sure you get tuned in and tag. What in the world do you got back there? Oh, my goodness. I like to forgot the game dinner. Here's Landon Nance again. Brother. Brother, you cannot do it. Somebody get him a, a, a microphone. Somebody hand him a microphone. You cannot do it from the, You can't be hunting from the baptistry, man. That's for, that, I know you. Y'all all dressed in church clothes. Yeah. They, Y'all they're here. have church on the game dinner. This is not wild. You got, you need to come on out here and let's get this straight, oh, brother. You, man. You, you are, I, everybody not say, again. Lord, help this man. Wild game dinner is in near future. We're going to have a great time, but I'm a, but Landon. We got to get this straight with you, brother. We, we you got to understand that. You look on the board. It's I'm, the, February. I'm the only one dressed. Look on the board. I know everybody don't see these announcements, but we always stroll announcements on the board. I ain't got my glasses. February the 26th. What's the day? Today is the. Six. You're 20 days early, man. Oh uh, man, you know they always said, you know, if you're on time, you're late. So I mean, I'm here. <laughs> well, so, so I can't put my decoys in the baptistry. Not in the baptistry. You need to put them. There's a pond over here in the neighbor's house. They might let you do it, but, but, but well, not in the my, baptistry. Oh well, y'all don't look at this. A gun in the church. Well, be careful with your gun in the church too. But on the 26th at 5:30, all men and their sons are going to be here. Eating wild game. Hey, I heard they're bringing some moose all the way from Alaska. Oh, I need my rifle for that. Well, it's already dead, so just bring oh, your well, appetite. Oh, mind then. And we're going to have a good time. I think they're going to have a bunch of different uh, wild game. So the 20, 20, 20 more days. 20 more days. So make sure you put it down. Brother Hale, you never heard of Brother Steve Hale? Paris, Tennessee? Yes, he's going to be with us. He's going to oh, speak to us, yeah. us me in that day as well, but he'll preach for us on that Sunday as well. We'll have a great time that weekend. But be, make sure you put it on your calendar. I ain't got no calendar. Well, maybe the smartphone. You can tell your smartphone, yeah. hey, remind me on the 26th. Hey, Siri. Hey, baby, it's old Wild Bill here. Yep. Put that down on the calendar, baby. And they'll, it'll ding you that morning. Hey, don't forget, you got wild game tonight, okay? Yeah, that's so, why I want a woman bossing me around. Yeah, yeah. Late for the game dinner. Then I'll sleep in. Won't be here. So it's the 26th, February, men. And we get to bring our sons. That's right. Well, I tell you what, better yet, today, today, let, all, so we can clear all this up. We need to meet all the men right after church, every man in this room, in the fellowship hall for about five minutes. Right after the church is dismissed, go to the uh, connect point for five minutes. If you're going to be interested in being at a wild game dinner, be here. Make sure you're there in that meeting because i got to clear some things up with you, okay? Bring me a calendar, yeah, brother. Yeah, bring me yeah, a calendar. I'll bring you a calendar. Let's give Landon a hand today. Thanks for helping me out. Want to put something in your memory? Make sure you put it down. It's going to be our first uh, wild game dinner we have in. But I'm looking for God to do great things today. Let's listen to the praise team. Praise the Lord. Let's give him a hand clap today. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many has come to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Hallelujah. This is not just another time to see your friends. 
but it's a time to give God the praise and the worship and, the, and, and everything that he deserves. Amen. He's brought you this far. Amen. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. So come on, let's give him some praise in the house today. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm here. I'm here to worship. I'm here. I'm here to worship. I'm here. I'm here to worship you. I'm here. I'm here to worship. I'm here. I'm here.
Hallelujah. What are you here for today? Hallelujah. Are you here to worship him this morning? Come on now. What are you here for this morning? Have you come to lift him up? Come on now. You know what it feels like when you begin to lift up the name of Jesus and his presence begins to fall and your body begins to feel the chills going all over it and the goodness of God begins to touch your mind and begins to touch your heart and a tear begins to come up into your eye and you, and you know at that moment that it is him, the one and the only. Nobody can replace him and all you want to do is begin to worship, begin to lift him up. Hallelujah, can you agree with me? Come on, does anybody know what I'm talking about? What are you here for this morning? What are you here for this morning? Are you here to play games or are you here to lift him up? Who, who says he's worthy this morning? Do you believe he's worthy this morning? Huh? Come on now, is he worthy this morning? Let's worship him. Let's worship him, hallelujah. Let's do it one more time. One more time. We're going to worship him. We're going to lift him up. We're going to give him glory because he is worthy. I'm here, I'm here to worship. I'm here, I'm here to worship. I'm here, I'm here to worship So you see here that we have a little church house sit out, and uh, that's for our building fund. How many believes you got to grow? You can't stay the same. You got to grow. Anybody agree with that? We can't stay in this place that we're at forever. We got to move forward. 
it's time to get this building paid off and move to our next building. In order to grow, it's got to happen. That's right. Although we have a beautiful sanctuary, beautiful church, and God is moving, everything is great, but we've got to keep moving forward. Amen. We can't get comfortable and, and sit still because if we stop moving and God keeps moving, what does that mean? That means he moves on past us, right? He's going to move on to whoever else is moving with him. So we got to keep moving. we got to grow. we got to get this building paid off. So today, not only do we need to give our tithes and our offerings, but we need to come and, and give into the building fund. And if you feel led of the Lord to go on and finish paying the note off today, make sure you obey the Lord. Hey, if the Lord tells you to do something, he will bless you for it. That's right. He'll replace it. He'll take care of it. He will not leave you hanging. That's right. Praise the Lord. Let's pray over this offering. Lord, we love you and we thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace. We pray that you would touch each and every individual here today, Lord God. Speak to our lives. Speak to our hearts, Lord God. Anoint us today, Lord God, to be a blessing, Lord God, to your people, to your church, oh God. I pray that you would bless these offerings that are given today. Bless every individual that may be struggling in any kind of way, Lord God. Move in their lives. Lord, whatever the situation may be, I pray that you would bless them. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. Everybody say in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give him some praise right now. Woo, there's victory in the name. Hallelujah. Whatever you're facing, woo, whatever trial you may be going through, claim that victory right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the
salvation. Today is the day I want to call on the Lord with all my heart, all my life. Come on, victory is for somebody in this room right now. But you've got to come and get it today. It's for you and your house. It's for you today to receive right now. Come on, if you're here today and you need something from God, would you just reach your hands toward the heavens? And say, God, here I am again. Lord, I pray your spirit, Lord, will anoint across this room. Uh, devil, you are a liar, and I command you to back up and leave families alone. There's families here that's desiring to see a work in their home. Uh, and God, I believe it's going to happen today. Uh, this is going to be a victorious day for many today. Uh, I believe their souls are going to be changed. Lives are going to be changed. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I claim it today. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. I believe it, Lord, with the church today. Uh, Oh, God, I praise you right now, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, I worship your name, Jesus. Somebody just say it with me. Say, Jesus. Come on, those of you that didn't say it, I dare you to say Jesus right now. Say, Jesus. Jesus, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. God, touch this place today. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap all across the building today. I love you, Jesus. If you want to return to your seats, you can. If you want to stand where you are and help me preach, that's fine, too. I, I just I don't know which way to go. When the Lord begins to move, I just want to run. I want to scream. I want to shout. I just want to lay down and cry. It's just amazing what the Spirit of the Lord would do if you let him. I was thinking a moment ago, I said, Lord, if, if Carville Police Department came in this morning and, and said, I'm going to arrest everybody in here that's apostolic Pentecostal, I wonder if he'd find enough evidence against you to arrest you. Let me ask you this, let me break it down a little closer. What would prove to anybody in this world that you are apostolic today? What would prove to anybody in this world that you are Pentecost? How would they know? Well, Brother Hunt, it's not about titles or names. You know, I'm just a Christian. No. You're marked as an apostolic Pentecostal. I mean, you can't even go to the hospital without putting a religion on your form that you fill out. What are you? But I wonder today, what proves that you are apostolic? I'm asking the question. I want you to ask, answer to yourself. But what proves you're apostolic? Your belief, I believe in one God, and I, I, I believe that, but nobody can see that. What proves your apostolic? What proves that you are Jesus' name worthy to sit on a platform that Pastor Hunt preaches on? What proves it? Does your radio station? Come on, does your radio station prove that you're an apostolic? Well, I'm preaching, y'all don't even know it yet. I'm already up in your Kool-Aid, you don't even know the, I know the flavor. Come on. Does your CD rack at home? got all gospel, does that prove you're apostolic? The preaching that you listen to on a daily basis, does that prove that you're apostolic? Oh, but Brother Hunt, I got the long dress, I got the long hair, that's all I need. No, it's not. Come on, I see a lot of long hair and long dresses. I see a lot of that stuff, but that don't mean that's who you are. But what proves you're apostolic? You know, in a world that I live in, I get talked about a whole lot and in, in the last day, I get talked more about by Holy Ghost-filled people than I do people that don't have the Holy Ghost. I'm just being truthful with you. But when I was in a workforce world, I would go out on a job, literally. I had a guy look at me one day and say, oh, you're one of them Pentecostal people. Do y'all handle snakes? That's the first thing you get, right? No, we're the wrong kind of Pentecost. No, there's no snakes around here, thank God. Everybody say, thank God. We're not handling snakes. But then the, first, the next thing they would say, do you swing from the chandeliers? That's evidence and proof that we're apostolic. And I, and I just, the first thing come out of my mouth, I said, I'm a short guy. I can't jump that high, but if I could, I'd try. If that's what it took to be apostolic. But that's really not what apostolic is. But being in love with God, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues as God give you utterance, and worshiping God. You can tell an apostolic by their worship. You can tell an apostolic by the way that they carry themselves on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Now, let me ask you today, how many is glad to be an apostolic? Pentecostal, apostolic, Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I'm not only Jesus' name, I'm Jesus only. Everybody say amen. God bless you. You can be seated for a few moments. I'm, I'm going to talk to you a little bit, then I'm going to preach. 
I just love what I feel when I come to the house. I'm glad of the freedom that I feel here today. You see, there's been times, even though I'm the pastor, I have stood in this podium before and not feel freedom. I felt like I was being trapped in a box. If you do it a certain way, you're going to be neglected. You're going to be talked. But I thank God it's not in our, our church anymore. I thank God those walls have been torn down. I thank God that the walls are just walls, praise God. But when God comes in, things begin to happen. I'm thankful to be in a free church today to be able to preach the Word of God. I'm thankful to be able to worship God in my own way. I don't have to worry about what people think about my worship. I'm thankful that we don't have any judges among us, that nobody judges the way each other worship, and nobody complains, nobody argues. It's just we're all happy people. Now I might be going a little overboard, huh? But as we all know, the enemy today is fighting tooth and toenail at the church. And I think Jesus knew the enemy would work overtime to destroy the church and every believer he can get a hold of. The enemy don't want believers, and I... I tell you what, I'm going to do what I felt to do a while ago, and I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. I felt to pray today because, look around. Everybody look around. I know we got probably 30 kids in children's church right now, and that's awesome. But uh, there's a lot of people out. Did you notice? Anybody notice when people are out? We, we missed you when you were sick. I'm pointing at some of you because this dude all, everybody's been sick in the last two years. Sometime or another, you ain't been in church. Everybody said, because I was sick. I can point at you. You know what? There, if there's anything that brings stress on the pastor more than anything in the church, more than anybody just this about me, you know what I'm saying? That don't even bother me. I mean, that, to me, that's childish when I hear that. That's childish. I just let that go. But when I don't see you, stress goes. Oh, I hope they're okay. I hope they're not mad at last Sunday's sermon. Y'all don't think, y'all didn't think I looked at I look at myself on Monday morning in the mirror and I think, oh, God, they ain't going to be there next Sunday. They ain't going to be there this Sunday. But this is what I, I felt a while ago that I want to I pray. We got a lot of watching by line today. But this is what I've seen happen. Y'all ready? This is what I've seen happen in, since uh, last two years. Let's just say two years, two and a half years. This is what I've seen happen. COVID, if that's what you, I hate to even use that word. I don't even like talk, calling it. But that mess, that, that thing that's out there has caused a lot of people to miss church more than ever before. Even though COVID's not there no more, but I've got in a habit of making an excuse for anything. It's easier just to say, I really don't feel good and if I sneeze, somebody in the church is going to think I got COVID, so I, mean, I won't go. Y'all, nobody would say that. I've heard it, folks. I've heard it. I've heard it. I, on Thursday, I've had people call me. I got a little cough, so I'm not going to be there Sunday because I feel a little cough. You see, that didn't happen, that didn't happen just without the last two years. That, that's brought on. And what I've seen is more and more of this. You got something serious that, that may happen and you had to, and it has happened. We've had to take time. We had to quarantine, which, by the way, let me just go ahead and, and declare here on video so I can make the whole rest of the world mad at me. I've already got half of the world mad at me. Make the other half mad at me right now. I don't believe in 10-day quarantine. I didn't believe it in 2020, and I sure don't believe it today. But you have to do yourself. Everybody say, I do myself. You have to do what you feel is best for you and your little babies and your little children running around. But I believe 24, 48 hours without fever, get yourself back into the altar. Get yourself back into the church. Because what's happening, watch this, the devil is coming in and stealing your dedication that you had from God. This is working already in my sermon. Y'all don't know it yet. But this is what he's doing. He's coming in and he's, he's sifting us as wheat. And the last two years, he's came in and he's sifted people. And before you realize it, I was just tired last Sunday, but this Sunday I'm really sick. Y'all see what I'm saying? It happens. Don't miss just because you got a toe ache or you're, you just don't feel good. And I'm, 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 I'm going to meddle here for a moment. You got to be careful what even jobs you take. Two dollars more an hour is not worth you losing your soul over. I'm going to leave it right there. But I know y'all right now, but listen, this is what I'm going to pray today. God told me a while ago, pray for the church, for those who have got trapped. 
You didn't mean to get there. You didn't mean to get into your non-dedication self that you used to be. That you, you know, but, but now you don't got. To, you're not dedicated like you used to be. Now you're you're struggling because it was so easy to say, "Well, if I go to church amongst the crowd," I had somebody the other day tell my wife, "I got COVID." And I know I got it from church. But they go to work every day. But they got it from church. You see, the devil has put that lie and deceitful lie into people's mind. And, it, and if we don't, the very elect, the very elite, the, the ministerial ministers are getting the same thought process in our minds. But the devil's come and to John 10 and 10. Can you put that on the board? Did I give that to you today? I think I did. John 10 and 10. Watch what the devil's come to do. John 10 and 10. It should be in my, my, view, my text that I sent you. John 10, 10. Okay, I, I know what it says. Oh, he says the, the enemy has come to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. He said, but watch this. He said, but I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Folks, I come to tell you the enemy's come. He's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. He's not going to stop until he destroys you. But as long as I got breath, according to Psalms 150, he said, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Come on, friend. The only way, this, oh, I feel like I need, to, I, need to, I need to say this. The only way you're going to get ahead of this thing called life is you're going to have to give God 100% again. Come on. Some of you that has lost your breath in the last few couple of years because of COVID and you don't breathe as good, your life, you don't feel like it's there anymore. You can't do as much as you used to. Because you don't have 100% breath. But when the 100% breath is in you, then you're able to do what you're supposed to be doing, right? Physically, mentally, spiritually, all that stuff works. Same way with God. Until you give God back 100%. Listen, I, I believe this. Until, oh, God, help me. Everybody say, help that preacher. Until you start giving God 100% of your tithes, you'll never get ahead of your financial gain. Well, I got a good job. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. He can take it in a moment of a second. If you've got a good job, I thank God that you gave what you gave a while ago. But if you're not giving 10% of your income, you're always going to be miserable. You're always going to struggle. You're going to, have, you're going to have fighting in the home. You're going to have distress. Your kids are going to have problems physically, mentally, and spiritually. You're going to fight all these things. I'm not preaching about ties. That's not what I'm bringing it all to a, a head right here to tell you we got to live this thing 100%. You can't be part-time and think God is supposed to bless you. You can't be in ministry and have sin in your life. Because it's not going to be blessed. Everybody wants to preach, but everybody wants to live like a devil Monday through Saturday. That ain't the way it goes. You don't go to the club on Saturday and get up here and preach on Sunday. Somebody's going to face a lot of devils in hell one day doing that mess. Church, it's time, it's time for us to turn this thing around the way we're supposed to. The way we were raised on it. I was raised this way out of the Word of God. I was raised on it. That's why I still preach it, and I'm not scared to preach it. I'm not scared to get behind a pulpit and, and, and preach against sin. I'm not scared to tell you that if a homosexual don't change his lifestyle, he's going to hell. I'm not scared. Well, Brother Hunt, that's just, you need to say it a little more loving. All right, let me say it a little bit better if it'll help you. Brothers and sisters, if you are a homosexual and you don't change your lifestyle, you're not going to be able to make it to heaven. Is that better? Come on, somebody. We need to get back into the Word. We need to get back. In, we need, we need to get back to learning to accept the Word of God when it's preached to us. Quit trying to make a reason why and you shouldn't or you don't need this. Uh, come on, what we need is the, the anointed, powerful word of God preached to us. I don't have time to get up here and smile and show all my pretty teeth to you today. I don't have time to tell you a nice joke that's going to get you by for a little while. i got to come today to tell you the devil is after, the enemy is after, and he's working overtime to destroy the church and every believer. But God has a plan. I said, but God has a plan to bring relief for if these days of trouble that we have are left un, I guess if they run its course, I guess you could say, if these days of trouble, I'm not sure how many is going to be able to make it if the trouble doesn't cease or do away with. 
because I see the church getting weaker. Not, not the church, but I'm talking about people in the church, the people that are supposed to be a part of the church. Listen, God's going to have a church. Y'all know that, right? Because he said the gates of hell shall not prevail. But I have a choice, Brother David, to step out of the church. I have a choice not to worship with the church or worship with the church. I have a choice to pay my tithes with the church or not pay my tithes with the church. I have a choice to be apostolic or not be apostolic. I have a choice to be on the membership roll or not be on the membership roll. I have a choice to be a voting member or not a voting member. Y'all know what a voting member is? A voting member is the one who pays their tithes. That's a voting member, one who, who is bought into this. That's why everybody in this room needs to buy into this thing. Make sure you buy into it. This is a thing that's going to take you somewhere. It's going to get you out of this world. I'm not here to preach on your giving today, but I'm telling you, if we're not giving according to what the Word of God says, then we can't be blessed. But Jesus says this about troubles and time that we're in in Matthew 24 and 22. And except those days should be short, and should no flesh be saved. He says, listen, he says, unless I shorten those days. What days? The days I'm talking about right now. The things that are going on. The things that you and I are facing that we just want to pull our hair out some days and be stressed some days and don't know how we're going to make it. How can I get ahead? God, listen, I feel a check in my spirit to say there, there's a lot of deceivable lying in your life that's going on right now. You've lied to yourself. You've told yourself things that's not true to try to make yourself, yourself feel better. But I'm telling you, if that's you, you got to come out. These are the things that are happening. He said, except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. He said, unless I shorten the day, i gotta, I, gotta, I, I want to tell the church. I put this ahead of my sermon today because I wanted to tell you guys this. God's fixing to shorten days. And he says, unless I shorten it, i got to shorten it because they're not going to be able to live. They're not going to be able to make it unless I shorten these days. And he says, but for the elect's sake, those, shall, those days shall be shortened. Who are the elect's sakes? Those that are filled with the Holy Ghost. Those who are still worshiping even though I'm having a hard day. There's some here in this room right now. If you're not careful, we'll fall into that avenue of saying, I don't think man should be able to tell you how to live. Well, I disagree with you. God gave me the power and authority and called me to pastor and told me to come and preach the word. Be instant in season. Reprove, rebuke. That's what we're here for. He's called me for a time such as this. Uh, and we better get a hold of this church and realize, I believe God, Jesus loves us enough that for our own account, that he would take the time and trouble to cut time short, to say, you know what, uh, I was going to let it go about a thousand more years, but I'm in the third day already, honey, and everything God done was in the third day. I believe he's in the middle of the third day or the beginning of the third day, and he's getting ready to come back to get the church. I'm going to tell you, let me ask you this. If you knew Jesus was about to walk through them doors and say, I'm coming in here to get all the worshipers today. I got a feeling some of y'all be doing two-step about right now. Woo, that's me, Jesus. I'm ready. But he's coming back to get the faithful because his words are going to say, Well done, thy good and part-timers. Well done, you Sunday morning Christians. Well done, you Wednesday night Christians. No, no. He's coming. Well done, thy good and faithful. So church, what I want to tell you today, we must be ready for the enemy's attack because he's attacking us. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy, as I said. But there is an all-out attack to bring the spiritual ruins and destruction of, of a devastation to every believer that's in this room. It doesn't matter who you are. As a matter of fact, if he can kill and steal from our elders first, that's where he's going to start. You know, the ones who were here when I wasn't even here, the ones who were dedicated when I wasn't even dedicated. But God has a plan, I believe, today to pour out His Spirit, and He's going to guard the church. Listen to me. The devil is at every service. Matter of fact, he may be sitting in front of you or behind you right now. Don't look at nobody. Don't look at nobody. But he's in the house. He's faithful. But you know what? He can't get around me when I begin to praise God. He can't sit around. He don't want to sit around. He gets uncomfortable. Woo! 
Hallelujah. He gets uncomfortable when I begin to shout unto Jesus with a voice of triumph. I'm going to slow down a little bit because I want y'all to get what I'm about to preach to you because I feel like, I know, I know, it ain't no feeling. I really know God spoke this to me. And it brings me to my text today in Joel chapter 2, if you want to stand for the reading of the Word of God. Joel 2 is one of the, one of my favorite books. I, I got so many favorite books, though, but when I read it, I just, oh, I like this, I like this. But history has not really recorded a lot about Prophet Joel. But we hear about him again in the book of Acts, you know, it talks about this is that, the Prophet Joel prophesied. But he probably lived the same time, they say, as Habakkuk, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel did, and and Joel 2 warns us of the judgment of God. How many knows God's going to come back with a judgment? He is. He's going to be. And there's nothing you can talk yourself out of either. You can't talk yourself out of it. All right, let's, let's read. While Joel speaks of going through the troubles and the seasons of loss, Joel also includes the future of the restoration. And I thank God for restoration for me and for my brothers and sisters. But Joel 2.21 says, Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do springs, for the trees bear her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain and moderately, and he will cause you to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. <laughs> Y'all look how blessed we are. All they had was the, the, the former, but he's going to give us the latter as well. He said, for the first month, and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the, fit, and the fats shall overflow with wine, with oil. Watch this. And I will restore to you the years. Let me say that again. I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the pommel worm, my great army which I set among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dwelt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am in the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass after that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters. I'm just going to tell you, my boys sitting back here today, I pray the Holy Ghost falls on y'all so strong. The baby goes flying that way. TJ goes flying. This, this is my sons. And I pray my daughter-in-law is speaking so many tongues that they sound like the Chinese laundromat or something. I do. Because I want their spirit of God to fall on them. And I want them to prophesy. He says, your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. If you'll help me pray today, God, I just love you. Thank you for this word today. Thank you for what you felt. I felt already in this place that you poured out in this place, God. But, Lord, I ask you one more time, just come for a few more moments today. Let us hear your word. Let us accept your word. Let us take the word for what it's worth to our souls, our spirits. Let us get our house in order. Let us get things ready. Let us prepare ourselves, Lord, for what you're about to do in this last day. And the church said, in Jesus' name, you can be seated. I've got a very interesting thought process in my mind that I really put a lot of thought into this thing today, but I want to title today just for a few moments, When the Worms Die Not. When the worms die not. When I think of worms, most of the time, probably like you, I think about fishing. Or a mother bird, you know, taking the worm and dropping it into the baby bird's mouth. You see those, those kind of things. That's what you think when you think of worms. But Brother Carnegie, when I think of worms, I also think about a little boy by the name of Isaiah Carnegie and my grandchildren turning all my rocks over in my yard, turning my basketball goal upside down and all the wood they could find to find the worms. And I, that's when I think of worms, these are the things that come to my mind. But, but most of the time, people don't even think about worms being destroyers, about worms taking a hold of our lives and how worms can come in and just destroy some stuff. Probably because you and I, we've never been bitten by a worm. Has anybody ever been bitten by a worm to the point that uh, just holding it for a few minutes, you're normally not going to get bitten by a worm or, the, 
or get put in a hospital or get sick because you got bitten by a worm. So really there's not a whole lot of fear about a worm. So therefore I can take a worm and I can, I can push it up on a hook and I can all the guts smash out on your hands. It don't bother me because I'm fishing. You know what? That doesn't bother me. I, I can put a worm on a hook and I can even let the worm sit around and crawl around in my hand and just laugh and it'll crawl around my fingers. And, you know, I can do that. And I have also been known to play around a little bit and throw worms on people. As a matter of fact, I got a couple in my pocket right now. I'm going to see if anybody else is like me that worms don't bother you, right? Uh, now, I did have a, a young man by the name of Walker Nance not too long ago threw a worm on me, and it kind of frightened me a little bit because it was a huge worm. And I, not Nance, Walker Lloyd, I'm sorry. I always call him that. But I, I, I had that fear for a sec because I didn't know what it was. But after I realized it was a worm, I said, boy, I'm going to get you back. Because, you know, worms really doesn't scare me because I believe today that worms are harmless. And I feel like they, they won't hurt me to a point. But I think today they are, harm, they are harmless. And they are, they, 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 if we're not careful, though, we, we don't pay much attention to them because they never hurt us, right? I mean, if I threw you a worm today, David, what would you do? Just, oh, it's a worm. You might play with it a minute. It's just a worm because we don't feel like it's harmless to our lives. But in our text today, I'm going to look, I want to talk to you about some worms that took place in our text. These are things that we don't think about that happen in our lives. But the first worm that they mentioned was canker worm. And if you look up the Hebrew word for canker worm, it talks in, and I probably won't say it right, but yalak or Y-A-L-A-K, which means to lick or to lap up. Inchworm, looper worm, span worm. What's what the canker worm means here in this text? The canker worm speaks of licking away all hope. It speaks of depression, discouragement. Most often the canker worm will appear in small numbers, but they can appear in large outbreaks as well. Now, does this not sound familiar in our time? If you want to say the canker worm is loose in our time today because many people are losing their hope, depression is on the run, and discouragement is on the rise, and all of these things, because the canker worm is eating a little at a time. Then he talked about the palmer worm. The Hebrew word for the palmer worm is, is gazem, G-A-Z-E-M, which means sorrow and grief. The enemy was, enemy's way of cutting off all joy in our lives, no joy in our lives. The larva that comes in, way of cutting off all joy, no joy in our lives. The larva of tinted moth and beetles, which they normally eat after apples and fruit trees. This speaks of the destruction of worry, fear, grief, and sorrow. Does that not sound familiar in the day we live in? This is another one that we're all familiar with and we know what it does, and, but it's the, called the caterpillar. In his Hebrew, is, is chasel or chasel, C-H-A-S-E-L, which larva of a butterfly speaks of devouring everything and causing great fear is what it does. Then you have the locust, and the Hebrew word is rapha, which, the, which is to multiply greatly and fast. The locust speaks of multiplying trials, troubles, and difficulties. But watch this. The locust also speaks of a loud volume. Y'all know them locusts get loud if you get a thousands and millions of them out there going. But that volume, what it does is it drowns out the still, small voices of God. And I really hope today that you take heed to these worms that I'm talking about today that we take as just harmless worms. But I want to tell you, it's not just a little cute fuzzy worm that's crawling around that we like to play with, and we let our kids play with, by the way. Come on, if you leave those worms around long enough, they're going to cause problems. But we play with these little fuzzy worms. Oh, it's always, it always starts out with just playing around and using the worm for a bait. But eventually, let me tell you, when you got bait on the hook, eventually something is going to bite it. Something's going to get a hold of your life. It's just as the pyramid Albert Vitals that we have outside by the, by the post here as you walk out the doors. Those pretty tall trees that look like Christmas trees, they, they stay pretty as long as they stay maintenance, as long as they stay sprayed, as long as we have somebody come by and spray for the bugs and the worms that you can't see in that. Even the eye can't see that those worms are there. You can't see them. Watch this. You can't see the worms on that tree outside until it's too late. You know what you'll start seeing on that tree, that pretty green tree out there? You'll start seeing brown spots. 
And then you can realize it, it's not somebody sprayed Roundup on it, but it's about a month ago some worms had got into that tree and began to eat a little at a time. So you sometimes get too late and you begin to see these dead spots to where it used to be all so green and pretty, but now it is brown. But church, just as a natural thing that I'm talking about out here outside today, it happens to our, us spiritually as well. If we leave the worms living long enough in our lives, I'm preaching to somebody in this room right now, and if you hear me, if we leave the worms long enough in our life, all because we didn't see them harm us, we didn't think they would affect us, they were pretty, it was, you know, uh, it, it brought a little bit of attention to me, you know, and uh, look at these worms, and everybody, ooh, a worm, oh, it brought a little attention into my life, maybe even brought you a little temporary happiness. I mean, who wouldn't want to buy their kid a bunch of worms if, they, if it makes them happy? Go for it. My, my, my boys, yeah, go for it. That's good. Let's have fun. But spiritually, it's a different story. Then before you know it, you're trying to figure out what happened. Where did I go wrong? What happened now? All this that I had going on, it used to be so green and bountiful and faithful in my life. And all of a sudden, the fire is going out now. All I see is brown spots. Now we're having to run around and try to back up and save that arborvita. Now I'm trying to have to run around and try to get things in order. When I should have started way before I could see the worms. You see, the worms didn't just come out last night and cause the damage today. Somewhere down the line, the worms begin to affect your leaves, and the worms begin to come into your home, and they affect you. You may not see it. Oh, let me preach here just for a moment. Moms and dads, hear me. Hear your pastor. You may not see it for a long time in your child because right now you can, you can love them and beat them right now. But it's going to come a day that they're going to look at you and say, Daddy, you're not whooping me no more. The whipping days are over with. But you see, the worms got in him when he was six. When he was seven, when he was 13, and you bought him the first cell phone with internet on it. Y'all don't want me to preach right there. Y'all want me to turn the page on that and leave that alone. But it's all cute. I can keep up with him. I can track him. I know where he's at. He don't care if you track him. He don't care. It's the pretty little boy that does good and smiles and says, hey, mom, I love you. Oh, yeah, I'll get you two phones if you want it. The little worms that come in that destroy the vine, the little foxes, they say, but I'm on, I'm on worms today, so let me just have a little fun with the worms. But you see, I once was all, had everything going, and I, but now I'm not feeling so much joy. I don't feel so happy anymore when I come to church. Or oh, David said, this is a day the Lord has made. I think I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. David was excited to go to the house of God. David had great days, but if you read the book of Psalms, you'll see David down one day, up one day. It's like he was just on a roller coaster. He dealt with situations as well, but the Bible said he was a man after God's own heart. So today we, we, we come in and now we got brown spots hanging all over us. We don't feel as much joy. Even the sermons that are preached are not like they used to be. We, can, we don't have church like we used to have church. The psalms ain't as fiery. The sermon's not as fiery. Brother Hunt's not the same. He's changed in his life. You know why? Because your arborvita is losing branches as I speak. You have brown spots hanging all over your green tree. You can't see your brown spots for looking at me. I'm poet. Y'all didn't know it. Y'all get that? Because we're in a living in a, in a, in a daydream world. We feel like I got it all together. I got a nice house, I got a nice car, I got my family, my family dress is nice, I get all name brand clothes, uh, they got the best iPhone, and I change numbers every six months, and I do this, and I do, I got everything going the way I want it, everything's my way, hallelujah, and the whole time we're getting, can I say this respectfully, we're getting age spots, I get them, you got them, if you're over my age or older. We get those things on our skin, but inside of our spiritual lives, uh, there's something they're eating in us. And I come today to tell anyone that might want to listen to me just for a few moments, I come today to tell you that all those things are, 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 are really, I'm just calling it, this, this is why I have a problem, because sometimes I call what I see. 
I don't hide back what I don't what I, what people try to hide and they try to act like it's not there. But brother and sister Inman, if if there's a problem here with you guys, uh, I can't act like it's not there. Uh, I got to come to you and say, what can I do to help y'all? What can I do to strengthen y'all? I can't act like I don't have any problems. Uh, I got to quit acting like uh, everything's good. My tree's healthy and I'm just doing lovely. Uh, hallelujah, everything is good. Uh, but I come today to tell you, I'm preaching to the church house today to tell you, I know you got some problems. Uh, I know you got some worms in your life, uh, but I come today, I start to bring me a sprayer and spray water all over y'all, but I didn't want to freak you out uh, because I come today to spray somebody and tell you, my God uh, is the God of restoration. He can take a, a arborvitae that's, that's about to die. He can take it and put a little chemical of love on it, uh, a little chemical of the blood on it, uh, a little chemical of joy on it. Uh, and before you know it, that old tree standing back up is giving God praise. Uh, it's giving God glory. That's what we need in this house today. God promises shalom, the God of total restoration. Shalom means, if you want to look it up, peace, restoration, completeness. Repayment, retribu retribution, healing. That's what that word shalom means. Can I tell you that God shalom is in this house today. The restorator, he, he's here to bring something back alive to you. Oh, we need a restorator in our lives, all right, today. We need it back into our house. Uh, we need that God that we serve to breathe on us one more time, oh God. I don't know about you, but I want God to breathe on me. I want God to breathe on my boys. Uh, I want God to breathe on my grandchildren. Come on, uh, my grandchildren are not too young to receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, I pray with little Sky, she'll be four years old coming soon, but I pray she gets the Holy Ghost uh, at four years old. But in order for that to happen, Brother Schuyler, you're going to have to keep those worms out of her life. You're going to have to keep those worms that's gnawing in her life. Where do those worms come from? Off of YouTube videos. Come on, they come off of that iPhone that you're going to let them look at all day today. You know why? Because it's a good babysitter. How about just take them to the park and sit down and play with them a little while? I better leave that alone. I heard somebody in your spirit say, you sat with them all day, brother. I heard that. I felt it. But this is where we are today. When we think about restoration and the things that the shalom, our God, can do, the, the prodigal son comes to my mind, and he was not worthy of total restoration. He done took his part of the money. He done went out and blew it. This is the way we are as a church, just like the one that was left at home. We act like the one that was left at home sometimes. We're in the church, we, we stayed faithful, we stayed dedicated, and that, that dude that went out there and he done partied it up, he lived it up, he done got uh, all kinds of diseases, and now he wants to come back in here and get what I got? Guess what? He can get it again. He can get restoration. When the prodigal son comes home, his father accepts him and says, come on in, buddy. Amen. He, he didn't accept him just as a servant either, but he accepted him as a son. I come today to tell you there's still a restoration for people's lives. Come on, there's still a restoration. God can bring you off of drugs. Your leaves may be getting eat up in your life. You may be destroyed. You may not be nowhere where you was 15 years ago. But I want to tell you about a God that loves you so much that he's standing here with his arms open today. And he said, come on home, son. Come on home, baby. I got something for you in your life today. Watch this in Luke chapter 8, uh, 15, 18. I will rise and go to my father. We're right in the middle of a mud, uh, pig pen right here, guys. This is where he's at. He's in the middle of a pig pen. He would have ate with the pigs. Now, I don't know if I tell you, but that's when you get pretty hungry. You're pretty hungry that you would have ate with the pigs. But he rose up and said, I'll go to my father from this pig pen. And he said, I'll go to my father and I have sinned against heaven before thee. This is one thing that you got to remember. we got to let pride go a little bit today. Proud to get between you and the altar every Sunday. That right there is a Facebook uh, notification, in case y'all didn't know. But you, ought to, you ought to post that on Facebook. Pride to get between you and the altar. And you'll leave every Sunday with pride standing about the third row like this right here. This is what pride does. I just want everybody to watch this. Pride's like this. Come on. 
You ain't getting past me. You ain't going to get out of that seat today. You're not going to get nothing from God today. No, because you know why? Pride, buddy. Don't you know people's going to think you're too humbly? You're a weakling. You're a sissy. You're not going to get anywhere. You, you, better, you better stick to your grounds. Uh, but, friend, this is what pride's going to do. But I challenge anybody in this room today, put your shoulder pads on, get your helmet on, and say, Pride, you're not standing between me and my salvation today uh, because this is a day uh, that the Lord has made. I am going to let God give me salvation again today. But he's coming against us. He's trying his best to keep the worm alive. If I can keep that worm alive just a little bit longer in his life or her life, eventually it's not going to be nothing left to survive. Eventually it's not going to be a whole lot left. Watch what he said in verse 19, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. He comes so humble he looked at his dad and says, Dad, I've done wrong. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. That's what he was asking. I want everybody here today to hear me, and I want you to know that the message of that locust is a lie. That locust that's come in your life is a lie. God gives us a personal message in our lives. Uh, we need to perk up our ears and hear what the Word says. Uh, though the locust, the locust tries to drown out the message of God, if we listen closely, uh, God still speaks. Sometimes we can't hear because of all the racket going around. Johnny, you're, you're lucky you're here today, son. It's not no mistake you couldn't be shipped out Wednesday. God, let me just say this real plain and real loud so everybody can hear me. God does not make mistakes. You do and I do, but my God does not make mistakes. But before you leave today, you've got to make sure every worm is dead in your life. Before you go home today, you've got to make sure every worm is dead in your life. Make sure that it's not nibbling at you a little bit because you see what happens is when the worm comes in and it's subtle and he's just moving a little slow, he's not causing no harm. It's just cute and I'm having fun. It's just vacation. I get things right when I get home. I make sure everything's where it needs to be. But then you come home and that little worm's still eating. That little worm's still moving. That little worm's still going about. And before you know it, that little worm is going to cause so much of it, things to destroy and collapse in your life that somehow or another you can't even hear but I come today to, my Bible says uh, let everything that hath ear let him hear what the word is saying to the church today the message of the canker worm of discouragement and the loss of hope listen I want to tell you God is still the anchor of hope the message of the caterpillar is the enemy will destroy us by discouragement he's going to devour us with fear let me say that again he's trying to devour us that caterpillar is trying to devour us with fear. You can say what you want to say, but we all got a little fear building up in us. We all got that caterpillar crawling around our lives, and that caterpillar, is, he's eating at us. And, and before you know it, all you got to do is just have a little bit of a sneeze. Brother Hunt, I can't make it today because fears came in you. You've got that fear. I'm going to just give everybody permission. It's okay to sneeze and cough today. It's okay to sneeze and cough as long as you cover it up. Fear has taken it on. Fear has came in and it's caused. But let me tell you, it didn't start in 2020. Fear started. That worm was in there a long time before that. Oh, Church, I feel today to tell us uh, we, better, we, be, we better get out our chemicals. Uh, we better get Jesus back in our hearts. Uh, we better start killing some of these insects uh, that's eating at us, devouring us. God's message, God's message today is trust me, my faith, and have faith in the word of God. God warns us not to listen to the army or the enemy the small, with the small insects that he's putting in our lives. Y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't, I know y'all, y'all listening really good to me today. I appreciate that, but y'all don't know how many, I mean, I literally have people come into my life and just open up mosquito boxes worm boxes they pour all this junk into my life and they want to guess what matter of fact it's so it, it's oh my lord i probably shouldn't say this everybody's gonna go crazy but you know what it's, it's almost like it, it's contagious it's almost like they don't even have to bring it to me they, they tell it to somebody else and they bring it to me 
and he gave it to me. Has anybody ever told you, and I, I'm going to open up a can of worms, I know, because it's just here recently, we've heard about this, but has anybody ever come up to you and say, Sister Edith, I just want to let you know I got head lice today. <laughs> I haven't touched her, I haven't got close to her, but what's the first thing you want to do? Uh, look at everybody scratching their head. <laughs> because that's the, the mental thing of it. And the enemy's out there to destroy us right here first. If he can get in that right there, he can cause pain and worry, misery, depression. Before you know it, you're at the wacko doctor and you're saying, say, I got problems. You know why? Because it started not yesterday or night before last, but it started years ago that you said, oh, it's just a cute little fuzzy worm. And before you know it, it's eating, it's eating, it's eating. The enemy's trying with every dart to steal our readiness. He's trying to steal our readiness for the rapture that's about to take place. He don't want you to be ready for God. He don't want you to be prepared. He wants you to leave this place today madder than a hornet at each other. He wants you to leave today depressed and upset and upset at the sermon. I can't believe it. My friend, if you'll pray through, you'll love every one of my sermons. That's what you need to do is pray through because all I'm preaching is the word today. But I come today to declare something that they sung here. You didn't, I didn't know you were going to sing that song today. But I come today to declare victory because guess what? Every battle belongs to God. Every demon in hell that tries to come against me, victory shall be mine. What did he say? First John 4 and 4, we are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I come today to, to, to give a shout out to somebody and let us tell today that we need to run back home. Because daddy's waiting on us at home. Daddy's there waiting on us. Worms have ate your life out. Your spirituality is gone. You don't feel the Holy Ghost no more in church. You can't feel the Holy Ghost when the songs are being sung and everybody's shouting. As a matter of fact, you're sitting back there thinking, I wish they quit shouting so Brother Hunt can preach and we can go home. You know why? Because the worms have eaten so much of your life. You used to be holy, but worms has ate that part out. Used to give 10%, but worms is ate that part out. Uh, used to show up at all the married events, but worms is ate that part out. I'm going to preach to you. I'm your pastor. You can have evangelists next weekend, but right now I'm going to preach to you. The devil is taking away your joy. I'm going to tell you, you need Sunday school. You need worship class. You need prayer class. You need Sunday school. You need young marriage events. You need the joy group. Let me just preach to you. We don't throw these things on the calendar just to have a calendar full. But we put them on there because I need you and you need me. Come on. If you're 50 and under, I'll see you at Valentine's Banquet. Praise God. If you're 50 and older, I'll see you at the joy group. Praise God because I'm in the middle. I get to go to both of them. <laughs> Besides all that, food's going to be involved. I'm going to show up. But more than the food... More than me being in the middle and get to go to both. I get to fellowship with my brother. I get to laugh with my sisters that's there. I get to, I get to throw the fuzzy worms around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I get to have a little fun. I get to enjoy each other. Why? Because if I don't, I'm going to end up in a cave somewhere. And I'm going to end up in a home somewhere. And I'm going to be sitting there, oh, poor old me. I can't make it. Did you hear what brother so-and-so said about me? Did you hear? You want to know how I make it? I keep coming to the joy group. I keep eating those greens and beans and pies and woo, all that good stuff. And I, keep, I keep coming and I hear the wisdom from the, from the joy group. Uh, then I go and hear the, the, the whining and crying from the young marriage class. Uh, I can't get this. My kids ain't doing that. Shut up, sit down, behave. I hear all of that. Uh, but you know, what makes it, you know what makes a church is all of this that I just named. You throw it all together, pull it all in a basket, shake it up, throw it out. I get you. Think about it. But as fun as all that is, as much as a worm can come into my life, Sister Courtney, and eat at me, it can come inside of a church, and it can eat at us. I, oh, Lord, I wish somebody that wasn't a pastor would preach this right now. But listen, if you can trust me with your soul, and I hope you do, I hope you're trusting me because you wouldn't be here. Surely you can trust me with what I'm about to tell you today. The worms are eating at you. 
And, and a lot of times you can go and water and get a little praise on, worship God. But until you take care of that worm, that worm's going to keep eating. Until I kill that dude out of my life, he's going to keep eating. He's going to keep sh- showing up in the wrong places, the wrong time. He's going to eat. Oh, nothing's wrong. This is a pretty healthy leaf that I got on the video today up here. It's a pretty strong steel, but you see what's eaten out of it. It's still standing. It's still green, but eventually it's not going to be anything left. So let, let me read a little more in Luke chapter 15, 23 about the prodigal son. And he said, he says, this is what I want you to do. He says, my son's come home. Woo! My baby is here. Hallelujah. Now I can imagine after Johnny's gone, 16 weeks, is that what it was, 14 weeks? When you come home, the lights are going to be out, the house is going to be dirty, everything's going to be laying around, you just, your room's going to be a wreck, and everything's just going to be a mess. You ain't going to get nothing. No, I bet when you come home, there's going to be a party thrown. You see, see, mama's already getting excited. Her, her son ain't even gone yet. She's excited about him coming back home. But you, could you imagine what this, this prodigal son's dad thought? Hey, a servant? What do you mean a servant? Boy, you're my, you're my son. Daddy, I ain't got nothing left. I done gave it all away. I done been down here. It don't matter. You're my son. He said in verse 23, bring here to the fatty calf. Don't give me no skinny calf. Don't you give me just any old calf out there in the field. You go get me one that's ready to eat. You get me a fat calf. And you kill it and you let us eat and you let us be merry. For this is my son that was dead and he is alive again. He was lost and he's found. They began to be merry. Church, I come today. This is a day, let me tell you again, the Lord has made. I think we need to receive an outpouring of God's Spirit and accept this restoration of the damage that the palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the locust has thrown into our lives. As a matter of fact, some of you got so many locusts in your life right now that you haven't heard a word I said yet today. You've cut it off. You can't remember because the locust is screaming so loud in our ears. But church, I'm going to tell you today, the worms must die. The music will come today. The worms must die in your life. You've got to get them gone. Because remember this, Brother Lloyd, those worms are contagious. They will flow into your family. They will, your, your, your kids will be doing the exact same thing. I want to show you how, uh, how I think... God helps us and guards against destructive forces of the enemy, of the worms that come in our lives. First of all, he said in Psalms 51, 12, he said, come, let us say this. He said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Let me restore it unto you and uphold me with thy free spirit. God, you've got to restore some things for me. Church, maybe we are forever ready. Maybe we are. Maybe we are just always ready. But no matter the attack of the enemy, In our lives, he's going to attack no matter how ready you think you are. But we have to lift up our heads and we have to keep the main thing the main thing. That's why it's important to make sure your children are inbred the doctrine of the Word of God. Make sure they got the Word of God in their heart. As a matter of fact, any any kid in the uh, our school here at the church that don't have your text, remember tomorrow, you're getting a spanking by Brother Hunt. Just letting you know. You better have your word ready. I know y'all have already got it memorized and you're ready, right? I'm not going to spank you, but that's how serious it is over there. To make sure that, oh, I got a parent's permission here. Woo. But that's how serious it is. Make sure if our kids can remember a country song, they should be able to remember the, the Bible. Hello? Hello? If my grandson, TJ, can ride a bike, a dirt bike at five years old, he ought to know the Bible. He ought to be able to know some of it. I mean, I don't know it all either. I can't quote it all. But I I, I do have it in my heart that I might not sin against him. We've got to keep the main thing the main thing and kill the worms, every worm in our life. For when the worm dies not, it will continue. Watch this. When the worm dies not, it will continue to itch. Or you may have me food for a little while. You may even have your husband or wife food for a little while. And, and I know our kids got a lot of us food. You know our kids are good at that. Oh, they so sweet. No, they're not. <laughs> but them worms eat at us. The worms die not, and we just eat away at us spiritual lives. Given to the locusts, 
the devastation that Joel describes here in the text that we talk about today, the final day of the Lord will be far worse than what it is today. What do you mean, Brother Hunt? I'm going to show you something. The New Testament gives us a fullest picture of the end time, the last day. When those that hate to live for God, those that hate Sunday school or hate the Bible or hate worshiping or hate remembering your Bible verse, be careful because we all can fall into that area, right? But this is what he said in the last day. Without God, my friend, we will be cast into hell. Brother Hunt, is that, that scripture? I'm glad you asked because I want to read Mark chapter 9 and 42. Watch this. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better to enter in halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell. In the fire that never shall be quenched. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. If thy, it's better to enter into the kingdom of heaven with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. For where the worm is, verse 48, dieth not, the fire is not quenched. This is when the worm dies not. Are you ready? It will always eat at you. Scholars say that the worm in this text represents your memory. I'm not going to argue with them, but it sounded pretty good to me. But the memory is where it's going to constantly, that's what the worms are representing in this text. It's going to constantly eat at you. And I'm sure today, even the service today, is going to ring in your mind that day, if that's the place you decide that that's what your eternity is. But I got some news for you. God is here today. And it, you don't have to take this invitation, okay? If you don't want it, you can be dismissed as soon as I give the invitation, except for the kids. Let's make sure, because I want to tell off on our kids. Parents, when you come and pray, your kids run and play in the hallway a lot of times. And they're, being, they're, they're playing or fighting. I just want to let y'all know. Y'all didn't know that, I know. But today, listen to me. If you want God to help you kill these worms that's been eating at you, destroying your dedication, destroying you, on a daily basis and putting, come on, everything that I named today, the enemy's doing it. If you're tired of it and you're ready for God to give you a complete makeover and you're ready for God to, to clean out all of those worms, whatever the worm it may be in your life, the dedication worm, the faithfulness worm, the, the, the fearful worm, the, the, the depression worm, whatever is coming against you, please today let God help you kill those worms in your life and give you the restoration you need. Now, if you don't need restoration today, I totally understand. But I tell you what I'll do as pastor. I'll be the first one to put myself on the altar. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm sick of these worms. I'm sick of them eating on me every Monday. When pastor has to make a decision, you don't know if it's going to make the other half of the church mad or the other half of the church happy. and don't know who's hot and who's cold. And, I pr promise you, they're going to let me know both ways. Which way do I handle it? What do I got to do? Do I do it? This worm is eating me. It's, it's... So I put myself here first today. And if there's any adults in this room, I know children are at the children's church, but if you're here today and you want to join me at this altar, I'm just going to open the altar. Maybe, maybe you want to come and say, God, Every worm is eating at me, God. I, I, I know I'm not what I used to be. I bless you as you come right now. Come on, let God just spray it in your life one, once again, that love, that joy, that peace, that long suffering. What is it going to take? What is it going to take? What's it going to take, sister and brother? Okay, maybe you're scared to come to the front. And if you are, would you pray where you are right now? And just say, God, if it's me that I need to heed this word, would you let me hear? God, I pray together with the church family at this altar today. God, I'm not going to let the devil steal people's joy and victory anymore. We're going to claim victory for every person under the sound of my voice today. The worms that have came in and ate we're asking for restoration. God, you said you're going to restore back to us. These that came out today, they're wanting restored. They're wanting their dedication back. They're wanting things that they have lost, their first love. They want it back today, oh God. 
Lord, I'm standing forefront of all of them. God, I want it back in my home. I want it back in my life. I want it back in my family, God. I'm as Job was. I'm praying for my whole family today. I pray they all get rest restored, God, what the enemy has stolen. But God, we at this altar, this is my family today, God. This family that you have given me 20 years worth of. The enemy's tried. He has taken. He has put us down. He has choked fear in all of our lives. But God, today, we're going to believe complete restoration. Come on, receive your restoration right now, sir. Don't take it hard. Come on, it's time to get things out of our lives that we've let creep in. Worms must die. When they don't die, they cause devastation in our homes, broken homes, marriages broken, kids running off. We can't have devastation like that, folks. Take care of the worm while you can. Oh 
Today, come back with us tonight. Expect a good time in the Holy Ghost. I love you. 